so happy to be sharing this moment in my astro journey with everyone when I'm finally going to be using my brand spanking new DIY observatory for the very first time. Thank you very much for joining me. You're watching Cosmos Astro. It has been such a long time since I've done anything. I think it's been months since I last did any sort of image session. Uh, in fact, the last image I took was uh, of the Iris Nebula. So tonight I haven't actually got anything planned as such. You know? I'm, so I'm thinking I'm going to treat this as a sort of get back into astronomy, astro photography evening. I'm just going to quite simply slow the rig to certain targets in the night sky that are visible from my observatory here. And uh, yeah, we'll just talk about them and get yeah, generally have a bit of fun. Low light situation here, yeah, it's got dark, pretty sharpish. So ever since I built this observatory, I haven't been able to get out. It's been absolutely awful weather. And it's always a case, isn't it? When you buy something new or you want to test something out for the first time, the astro gods just want to test your patience, don't you? And rain on your parade. Um, you're on the note of buying new stuff. Up. I think the main culprit to this is anyone who went to the International Astronomy Show a few weeks ago and bought something new. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely your fault. It's forecast clear all night. However, you know, I do live in England and the northeast of England at that and the weather is unpredictable. So as always, take that with a pinch of salt, of course. For the benefit of anyone new to the channel and not familiar with what gear I am using, because um, like I mentioned, the, you know, I haven't done a, an image session in a while, and video included. Uh, the main focus has been on this build. Um, this is for you guys. So the scope that I'm using is the Red Cat 51 from William Optics. It's a small, compact, wide-field refractor telescope. Absolutely love this scope. Great for deep sky astrophotography. Um, however, the, the wide-field does sort of get cropped out a bit when I use this camera here, which is the 5. 33 MC Pro from ZWO and it does have a, a small square sensor so that wide field does come in a little bit. I also auto guide so I've got a small mini guide scope and guide camera and it's the ESI 290 mini for also from ZWO. You may see grown trend here. Uh, this is mainly sort of ZWO products and the reason for that is is because I've got a small red box on the front here which is the ESI Air Plus. I've also got a ZWO auto focus there, and this is all mounted on top of the EQ6R Pro from Skywatcher. And in turn, sitting on top of my DIY here, I've got a dew heater band on the scope and also on my guide scope to keep that dew away. So the observatory isn't fully operational. Um, I haven't got any power, um, so I am using temporary power, just an extension lead. I'm this, put this out of the window here and run it in, into the house via the kitchen window. Um, it's how I used to do things before I built the observatory, so it is a proven method anyway. So we are nearly ready to go. I'm just going to finish setting up. I can see uh, our moon starting to creep up and <laughs> by the looks of it, it's round about in the 80% illuminated mark. Um, and there is something else I can see as well, which is giving me an idea. All right, how exciting, we're ready to go. I've the polar, well, checked the polar alignment uh, just to make sure it was still in and yeah, it was all fine. Set the auto guiding away, which is sitting at 0 0.54, so it's all good. So everything is just how I left it um, when I last did an image session. Um, all working, which is a first for me, to be honest. I was expecting something to go wrong. So I think we're gonna go for something quite obvious, um, the moon. I'm going to just go slow that uh, to there now. Select the moon, it's just going to go to. Something that's been absolutely hammered for countless generations. You know, craters all over it, scars, battle scars everywhere. You know, it's still a beautiful object, and, you know, probably one of the first things that people go for when starting this hobby. Me included, by the way. In fact, I think this was the very first astro target I went for. Um, before I went for any sort of deep sky sort of stuff. And I caught it using my mobile phone, put it up with the eyepiece of uh, the telescope that I had at the time. 
It's uh, looking a little atmospheric. I, mean, I could adjust the focus slightly. I don't think it's going to do much. Mm, a little bit. So I'm just having a little mess about here, but as you can see, some of the craters. It is, it is quite hazy. So uh, that's that's a pretty fab like. This is Jupiter, and you know I'm not going to expect much from this little scope. Now, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with this. I'm, I'm going to have a play around now, but I'm, I do believe I know at least two of the moons here is Io and Europa. I think. <laughs> let's have a play around. Let's let's have a bit of fun here. So I I, I don't have a clue what I'm doing uh, when it comes to plants. To be honest, you're actually capturing that, um, seeing the moons there. My six-year-old daughter Jessica is going to go nuts when she sees this. I'm going to do a little video capture. Uh, it's her favourite planet, and she's a bit like me. She's an absolute space geek. So, we'll do that, and then uh, I'll slow to the next target, and I'm feeling a deep space object coming on next. Next target is going to require a little bit more exposure time just to bring out some detail, but uh, it's just popped up on the screen now. Um, I'm going to do with five minute, five minute exposure, I think. Got it all prepped, so 300 seconds. Uh, we are going to crack on at that, and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll uh, have something nice. Oh wow, that looks pretty uh, sweet. So. This here is uh, Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy. It's the third biggest galaxy in our local group of galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy being the second biggest. And you know what? I think I might go for the largest, which is M31. I'm just going to scroll down and have a look. Yeah, Messier 31. So this is the Andromeda Nebula. It is a galaxy in its own right. And it's massive. Oh, lovely. Well, that'll be, uh, uh, let's have a look. That is an airplane. Let's just come right through the shot. Uh, but yeah, there it is. If you zoom in there, you can see the bright core. Right, let's slap an exposure in there and we'll see how it looks. Ah, oh, that's something tasty. <laughs> God, man, that's brilliant. So I'm just going through the menu I've just seen are uh, NGC 1499, the California Nebula. All right, so here it comes. Ooh, hey, look at that. quite happy with that so I think I'm gonna choose one more target and then I'm gonna do an image session on one of them targets I just want to quickly talk about the ASI uh, plus to be honest so my future plans for this is I don't want to use it in the observatory I, I want to use Nina and have that directly uh, connected via uh, cable 
straight to my computer to an office that I'm going to um, be building in, in my home. Uh, now, I don't want to get rid of the ASI. I absolutely love it. You know, it is a great bit of kit, I think. Uh, but I am going to be using it in, in a different capacity, um, a more mobile rig. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there. That's, that's my plans for that. So what I'm slowing to uh, now is, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it or not. Uh, it looks like it's just, just clearing the observatory wall. Is Messier 45, uh, Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, which is an open star cluster. It's quite a bright object, uh, visible to the naked eye as well. If you are uh, new to the hobby um, and you're looking for targets to go for, this is quite an easy target, uh, I would say. another target down and I'm just noticing a bit of cloud starting to creep in which is just typical hopefully uh, it's not an, a lot it stays away <laughs> before I slew to one of these targets I want to talk about the observatory itself so yo, I'm trying to explain the feeling I've got it's I don't want to sound too cheesy here. it's it's like a, quite a magical moment you know I'm open top here looking at the stars and it's well it's like my own private planetarium if you like i think that's the best way to explain it and it's absolutely brilliant i you know i think they spent so much time i think they were four four to five month building this and it's finally finally come to this moment and i'm like i said at the beginning i'm so happy to be able to share this moment with you all so uh the target of choice is going to be the andromeda galaxy now Normally when I go for, uh, go for a galaxy, I don't want the moon to be out at all, especially not this highly illuminated. But you know what? I'm just going to see what happens. It's either going to be a wreck or I'm going to be able to do something with it. Well, I've got a five hour session here. Now, I only got about two and a half hours uh, of data. The clouds rocked up, got most of the frames. Oh, never mind. Oh, given the fact that the moon's out as well you know, and highly illuminated, it's not going to be the best image of M31. However, it's what I've got, and of course I'll share that at the end. You know, it, at the end of the day, it was sort of an afterthought anyway, and you know, and it, I just wanted to get the experience of being in the observatory more than anything. Um, so having the image is a bit of a bonus. I'll just have to put a bit more work in, see if I can improve on it. So by no means, a uh, finished product. Now, I want to name the observatory, and I have got a few ideas I want to want to call it. However, I want to hear if you have any suggestions yourselves so if you do please leave a comment on the video or alternatively i'm going to drop a post on the community tab on the home page so you can either leave it on the video or leave it there either way i'm going to read them and i look forward to hearing your comments and your suggestions and finally i want to say an absolute massive thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel since making the video, I've uh, hit, well, I've gone past the 700 subscriber count, which is absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> it is to me anyway. And I truly don't take any of this for granted, and I really do appreciate all your kind support, whether it be a watch on the video, or a like, of course, a comment or a subscribe. You know, once again, from the heart, thank you very much. So, oh, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you're still watching. And until next time, take care, everyone. Clear skies. And until next time, bye for now. What's this? What is it? Jupiter. Jupiter, yeah. Is that right, is it? Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing, and amazing, and amazing. There's the moons. There's Ayo and Europa there. And then the middle is Jupiter. That well, is Jupiter, yeah. Maybe if I get a big scope one day from letters there. Yeah. Yeah, even better. Yeah, even better.